All right, guys, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, season is obviously getting close, and these cooler mornings like this do nothing but ramp up that excitement level. I am out here doing a little shooting this morning, uh, getting some shots in in a little bit different environment. You know, it's always nice to break up that kind of monotony of the backyard routine, you know, change the scenery, kind of challenge yourself a little bit. I'm going through, I brought my smaller 3D target. I bought a little stand for it so it's easy to move around. Uh, but just putting it in, you know, this little wood, wood lot here and trying different shot angles, different elevation changes, uh, known yardages versus unknown yardages, just trying to challenge myself a little bit, lengthening it out, trying some long distance shots, uh, tree stand shots. So just, just really kind of challenging yourself from a different perspective and getting out of that standard backyard uh, practice routine, uh, not only good for your skill set and your confidence level, uh, but it's a lot of fun too. So um, I'm enjoying shooting this morning and have a little more work to do, but figure I'd take a break and go over my two bow setups for this year. Um, been getting a lot of questions about, about all of it, so I figure I'd run through it all. Starting with my recurve. Uh, so this is the Hoyt Satori, and I, I got this probably four or five years ago. I have to go back and look, but I've had it for a while, starting to, to show some, some signs of wear. Um, but while I've shot it a lot, I haven't deer hunted with it. Uh, I've killed a couple of turkeys with it in the spring, uh, one this past spring and then another one a couple springs ago. So it's been fun to carry along in the turkey woods, but it's, uh, it's a goal of mine to kill my first whitetail with it this fall. Um, like I said, I've had it for a while. This is the the 19 inch riser, which is the medium one that Hoyt offers. And I have 50 pound limbs on this. Um, love shooting this thing. I tell people all the time that shooting the recurve has been way more fun than any compound I've ever shot. Uh, it's something about the experience and the instinctual shooting that makes it so much fun. Um, but like I said, it's it's high on my priority list to kill deer with it this fall. Obviously don't have a ton of accessories on it. I do have this little feather arrow rest I think I got from Three Rivers Archery that's been nice um, as far as... Um, the release or the the tab i'm shooting the fred eichler three under tab uh, again it's just kind of what i started with and been comfortable with and this one's been a good one it's, it's nice and thin out at the fingertips um, so yeah i mean obviously i still consider myself a novice when it comes to the traditional archery world uh, but it's been a lot of fun just learning and cutting my teeth on it and uh, you're know, just figuring out how to shoot it how to get comfortable that's kind of the name of the game with traditional archery is just repetition practice you know knowing your form knowing your anchor points all that type of stuff so uh, super excited to pursue deer with this this fall i'm still tinkering with my final arrow setup um, i'm trying to ideally get it to where i'm shooting the same head for both this one and my compound bow so I'll share that once I have that dialed in, um, but I definitely plan on spending time with this. Uh, not exclusively, obviously, I'm kind of going to base it off of where I go to hunt each each day. Uh, you know, if it's a stand, you know, maybe I'm hunting a pinch where I'm very likely to get a short range shot. I'm going to take the recurve with me. If it's more of like a field edge or something where a longer shot is necessary, I'll probably take the compound. We'll just kind of see how it goes. Um, but it's going to be a lot of fun, you know, taking this to the woods. So uh, this Satori has been a lot of fun and it, it's a definitely a sweet shooting recurve bow. And my compound bow. So obviously this off season, I had somewhat of a blank slate to work with as far as you know trying different products or just figuring out what I wanted to use. The bow category for me though was one that I didn't really have interest in exploring. Um, it was always kind of a no-brainer to continue to shoot Hoyt for me. Uh, the products and the people behind the products more importantly are second to none. So I'm excited to not have to sh set up a new bow this off season and continue to shoot the one that I had switched to midway through last year. And that is the, the VTM 31 um, aluminum bow, just a sweet shooting bow, uh, lightweight, smooth. I love the inline accessory system. You have the pick mounted sight here, uh, the lower more forward stabilizer. Uh, just overall a very good feeling 
um, balanced bow. Uh, so again, excited to shoot that again this fall. Um, I am trying a new sight this year and uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna, I'm testing it out, but it is the Garmin Zero. And when I first got introduced to their sight and the possibility of shooting it, to be fully transparent, I was a little bit hesitant um, just based on my perception of this site and others like it, the ones with the range finding capabilities. Um, to me, my perception was, A, it's a lot of technology. I'm not necessarily looking to add more technology into hunting. You know, we have a lot of it the way it is. Um, but B, you also think about what could go wrong, etc. I can tell you, having shot it for a couple months now, it's been, uh, my perception has changed for sure um, on what it can do and what it can't do. But also, it's just made shooting even more fun as far as a compound bow goes. You know, shooting longer distances, being really dialed in. There's a number of really cool features to this site um, that I didn't necessarily think about going into it. So <clears throat> at the end of the day, it's made shooting more fun and, and potentially that's all the reason a guy needs to, to try one. Um, that's, it's definitely been that kind of experience for me. But the site itself, like I said, a lot of really cool features uh, for a hunter. You know, it has the range finding capability built in, so you don't need an additional range finder. But what's cool is you can really customize it to your liking. You can have, you know, that pin dialed in to the exact range when you range the target or an animal. You can have that specific pin. It eliminates the need for pin gapping. And that's only a difference uh, depending on what sight you use. If you're using a slider sight already where you're dialing in the distance, you know, it's no different. It's, the only difference is you don't have to actually do it and then come to draw come to full draw you can with this site it's you know all in one step it's a press of a button and you have that that pin so again the nice thing about this site though is you can set it up how you want you can have five a stack of five fixed pins if you want they're digital pins but you in within this site window you can see your 20 30 40 50 60 you can pick your colors and have that like that or you can have you know maybe one or two fixed pins and this is i think how i'm going to do it this fall is set up like a 20 and a 30 potentially where those are fixed um, but then you also have the ability to range with the push of a button the exact distance you want so in case something happens super fast and I don't want to mess with ranging or let's say I can't get a distance for whatever reason you know brush in the way or uh, if I know the exact distance I can just use one of those fixed pins at 20 or 30 um, but if I have the time or uh, the capability I can dial it into the exact distance I want just with the push of a button in that range uh, range finding capability so very cool customization really fun to set up it's very intuitive another really cool thing that i didn't necessarily think about was this site actually uses a reticle and that alignment is, is important when you're ranging but that the translation to checking your form is pretty powerful so it's been fun for me to try different situations to make sure i'm not torquing the bow and my grip pressure is the same each time um, in different situations so obviously standing uh, kneeling from a tree stand um, gloves on gloves off uh, all that type of stuff and you, it'll it very quickly highlights the, with that reticle whether you are uh, your form is changing at all as far as the way you're gripping the bow so pretty powerful feedback there um, in terms of improving your shooting um, and just a, a ton of other cool capabilities of this site. Uh, so again, trying this site this fall, I've had a lot of fun shooting it so far. Um, a lot of my questions were addressed as I started to use the site and learn more about the site. Um, will I shoot it long term? I have no idea. Um, be one of those things that try it this fall and continue to, to give feedback, continue to review it. And uh, we'll see what the future looks like. But uh, if you have any questions about it, feel free to reach out. It's been a really cool site so far. Um, very, very impressive for sure.
and my arrow setup. So I'm going with the day six arrows this year. I decided on day six for a couple of reasons. One, their quality is at a very high level. Everything they do is premium, you know, from the carbon to the steel to all the components. You know, everything is made to fit there. Brian and his team do an excellent job maintaining that. Uh, the second reason and, and probably primary reason though is I wanted to go with an arrow company, a broadhead company that had offerings for both of my setups, both the compound and the recurve, and day six was that for me. Um, in fact, Brian himself is a big traditional archery guy. He's killed a ton of big game uh, with traditional equipment, uh, so he's a good resource for that. And uh, ultimately, you know, just those those factors pushed me to, to go with day six for this year. Um, I've loved shooting this arrow. This is the HD 300. It's a micro diameter arrow. So the ID on it is 0 0.165. It is 11.2 grains per inch. Um, so a little on the heavier side. I'm shooting a 50 grain insert out cert and 125 grain fixed blade head. So uh, overall weight is a little bit heavier than what I've traditionally gone with. It's a 545 grain total arrow weight. Um, but it's shot awesome so far and obviously the penetration is going to be very good with this setup. Um, the broadhead is the Evo X, again the 125 grain Evo X. I have the three quarter inch bleeder on here. Um, very premium steel, you're not going to see the rust and corrosion, good edge retention. Um, but one of the biggest things I noticed just grabbing it out of the, the case is the thickness of the blade. A lot thicker than what I've shot historically for fixed blade heads. Uh, it's obviously going to be more durable, but also um, you, you're going to have more displacement with that thicker blade too. So uh, excited to bring down a few deer here in the next few weeks with these heads. Um, I did a four fletch configuration shooting the boning black sky veins. Uh, they're a little, a little stiffer, uh, but they've been very quiet and, um, have shot tremendous so far. So, uh, th that is my arrow setup <clears throat> in general, you know, I've kind of said it, but the, the overall shooting for me these past couple months has been more fun than normal. I've just really enjoyed shooting. I've enjoyed my setups. Um, typically this time of year, I'm just shooting just to get dialed for the season and be ready. Uh, but now I find myself like this morning going out and actually shooting for fun. And so that's a fun place to be, you know, when you're shooting well and, and, uh, you know, you're doing it more, um, more for something to do rather than out of necessity. So uh, enjoyed shooting, I'm gonna get some more shots in this morning. Um, and I'll go through more specifics on the setup as we get into the season. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Um, but man, we are getting close. The deer starting to show back up. A lot of my properties historically are not great summer properties. So this time frame that we're in, this mid-September time frame, is when I typically start to find these bucks back and they're slowly but surely starting to show back up. Unfortunately, we are dealing with some EHD issues. Uh, I'd be curious to know if you guys are seeing the same. Um, haven't found any big deer or mature deer yet, uh, but we're certainly finding them. So um, fingers crossed that it doesn't get too much worse. Um, and I'll start sharing some of these bucks that are showing back up as I start to formulate a, a target list. Uh, it's an exciting time of year, starting to <clears throat> monitor the trail cameras a little more closely and uh, we'll be in a tree before we know it. So thank you guys for always us watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one.